here. Uh, I wanted to do a different kind of video today. In fact, it's going to be the, a different kind of video uh, that is an introduction to a different type of series that I want to do for this channel. Um, I first started the ADD Magician uh, because I kind of wanted to show off some of my um, unique magician skills. I wanted to show off how I'm able to create um, classic stuff or new types of tricks um, of my own and and my own brand of street magic and it was it was basically just for me to um, show the world some new cool stuff that maybe they haven't seen before um, but as I thought about this this platform that YouTube is I, I started realizing that maybe I should offer a little bit more um, bang for the buck so to speak um, offer a little bit more content that is valuable to my viewers um, so there's two different types of videos that I think I'm going to start doing um, I Magic is an art, and it's taught to you by either other magicians or you go out and you do the homework and you learn how to do it yourself and you practice for hours and hours until you master it. And so I didn't like the idea of being just another tutorial channel. I didn't like the idea of sharing the secrets, you know. They say a magician never reveals the secrets, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. But I think that if no magician ever told a secret, there would be no magicians at all. Um, a lot of my magic has come from uh, people like Chris Ramsey or Scam School or, um, you know, there's, there's countless other, uh, 52 cards, um, Card Shuffler 99. There's a lot of different great tutorials out there, Jarek 120 even. Uh, so I wouldn't be where I am right now in my skill level of magic if it wasn't for people like that. That being said, I thought that maybe I would start offering some intro level tutorials. So we're going to start today with a classic um, called the card spring. And the card spring is what you saw in that little intro there. Basically, it's where you shoot cards um, almost magically from one hand to another. And <laughs> it's funny, I will do tricks that look like I'm bending the laws of science and nature and physics. And I'm really impressed with myself and my ability to do this. And I show off this awesome trick. And the funny part about it is, I then do a card spring and the spectators like, oh my God, like they're more blown away by the card spring than they are the actual illusion that I just pulled off. So a good card spring kind of tells people you're a magician. In fact, I've, I have this like, as, as, as somebody with ADD, I have this thing where I like to um, have a deck of cards on me. And if I'm on a bus or if I'm just sitting somewhere in a waiting room, I'll pull them out and just start fidgeting with them because it keeps my mind focused. It's an ADD thing. It's like a tick, if you will. Um, but I, it's amazing to me how often people will say, are you a magician? Because I'm able to do a card spring in a little tiny itty bitty minuscule amount of cardistry and, and of course I go well yeah actually I am and then I do a couple tricks for him and, and it's kind of fun. So without further ado let's get into the tutorial part. This is how you perform a card spring. Uh, for this uh, I'll be using the split spades deck. It's one of my favorites. I think it looks fancy um, and it's a great deck. Now there you can do a card spring with a clean brand new deck and you can also do it with one that's broken in. Now this Split Spades deck, you'll see it on a lot of my videos, it's actually one of my favorites because it is very smooth and it's broken in and easy to card spring on. Um, and so this is the one that I usually use. Now if I were to use something a little newer, for example, this is the Bicycle Dragonback deck and it is a lot uh, smoother because it's a newer deck for me. Um, it's still smooth, um, in fact they may even flow faster. But because the deck's not broken in, it, it feels a little clunkier. So when you're first learning to do it, I, I might recommend that you use a deck that's a little more broken in. So the Split Spades deck is what I'll So now there's actually two different ways to card spring. One of them is easy, um, and one of them is more challenging. But like most things, the more challenging is the one that looks the best. When I first learned to do a card spring, um, I learned the first way that I'm going to show you. Um, which is easier but doesn't look as good and kind of sounds a little louder and more clunky. Um, it's off the top of your finger. So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to hold it. If you, uh, I'm going to assume that you're right-handed. Um, I hold it like this to prepare. This is my left hand. Uh, for you guys, it probably looks like your right hand. But we've got the pinky placed on this corner and then about halfway up the deck and then on the back like that. Now all I'm doing is setting up for this. Now, this is kind of like, a, the, if this is the mechanics grip, it's like a reverse mechanics grip, and the pinky has nothing to do with it. We have the thumb centrally located at the bottom. We have the pointer, middle, and ring fingers here. None of them are on the corners. 
And what we're doing, you want to put your other hand, your receiving hand, in like a claw form. And that's to catch the cards. And all I'm doing is you push it in first, so the whole thing is like bent to the seat. And then you lean your fingers back and you literally roll them off the top here. And as you do, they'll begin to shoot off the deck. Now when you first start doing this, you'll do it really close. Like you'll do it like this because you don't want to drop them. Let me put it this way, with anything having to do with cardistry or card strings, when you're first learning, you're gonna drop, that's okay. You'll drop thousands of cards, that's okay. So, all I'm doing, if you'll notice, is I'm shooting this off the front of my fingertips, just like that. Now that's the first way to do it. And you'll notice, see I dropped one there myself. You'll notice that it, it looks okay. Now, the way that I prefer, and with, uh, you'll find most professional magicians do, is roll them off your thumb. So we're gonna do the same type of thing, right? Except this time, we're gonna take the middle finger, we're gonna place it on the corner with the, the uh, tail pit here, okay? The thumb goes on the opposite corner with the pit. Now we're still bending with the C, but all we're doing is applying pressure, and it's rolling off my thumb. Now as it's rolling off my thumb, I'm slowly pulling my thumb back like this, but all I'm really doing is squeezing. Now watch how smooth this looks. It sounds better, it's not as loud, it's not as clunky, and it slides in. <clears throat> now because it's able to slide just like that, you can actually do it from farther away with more confidence of not dropping. Um, so again, I'll show you from a different angle here. All I'm doing is rolling it off my thumb. They call that a thumb card spring. Now what I like to do, because I'm not a fan, I used to deal blackjack, so I became a stickler for keeping the cards straight. I'll alternate, I'll flip the whole deck over and I'll shoot it this way with the top tips actually on top here, just to re-bend the cards and keep them all straight. So again, all we're doing is we're holding it like this, we're bending it in. But at this time it's middle finger on this corner, thumb on the, on the opposite corner, and squeeze. Now if you try to do it the opposite way, it's not gonna work. You can actually try and put it on the opposite corners, and first off it feels weird, but it just, it doesn't do it, it shoots off wonky. So the thing to remember is, you're going to drop cards, that's okay, but once you get it, you get it. So that's essentially how you can do a card string and kind of impress your friends. Now once you've gotten that down, and you're able to do card strings, you can throw into um, various simple cardistry stuff, which I'm not gonna show on this video, but I'll show later. And that always makes it look like you are a card shark, whether you are or not. And a lot of it is showy and flashy. Some of it looks like it's easy to do. Some of it looks like it's hard to do, but it all takes practice. And as long as you're willing to practice and work on it, you'll really nail it and really impress your friends. And that's the card spring. So, I hope that's not too bad for my first tutorial. Thank you so much for joining in and watching. I mentioned at the beginning that I was gonna do two different types of videos. The first will be tutorials, which I'll throw in once in a while to keep it spicy. Um, my other type of new, new type of video I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start educating people on what ADD is. Um, my channel is called The ADD Magician because I have adult attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Or in my case, just I don't really have the hyperactivity side as much, so it's just adult attention deficit disorder. Um, in another video, I'll get a little bit deeper into that, but as I've been um, pursuing academia um, and getting into schooling, I've learned more and more about this disease that I live with, this um, um, disorder, if you will, or this different way of processing information that I, that I live with. So I wanted to share a little bit about what that is, maybe some tips and tricks on how to focus if you have ADD, and hopefully that clears up why I call myself the ADD magician. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share. Um, I really do appreciate it. It lets me know what I'm doing right. I don't get a lot of comments because I don't have a whole lot of followers, um, subscribers that is. So drop me a sub and I'll sub back. And uh, if you like this, if you want to encourage me, if you want to know how to do something, I might not share all the secrets because like I always say, a good trick has two or three or four secrets to it. So, you know, I might give you the stepping stones to it, but I don't think I'm going to give away all my secrets here, nor should I. Um, but I'd love to tell you a little bit more, answer any questions you have. So leave me a comment, and um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for, again for tuning in.